Hey guys, it's Sid here with SVTPerformance.com and what you're looking at is my favorite version of the Coyote engine. This is a 2020 Bullet Mustang and it's unique Coyote has a few hopped up features that brings it up to 480 horsepower from the standard 460 horsepower you'll see in the Mustang GT. Uh, we've got the GT350 intake track, throttle body, intake manifold, a little different tune up and uh, bumps it up 20 horsepower. And what I really like about it is it messes with the uh, torque curves a bit, gives you a little bit more torque on the bottom end, and it makes a very, very nice package the, with the tune in it and everything that uh, Ford put together on this. This is my favorite version of the Coyote, uh, as far as uh, your NA versions. Uh, this thing is really nice. It's a very nicely thought out package. It works well in the car. You don't give up bottom end torque. Uh, you don't give up high end horsepower. It's a very nice compromise of a lot of components put together to create a very nice package. And I'm really looking forward to this thing in the Mach 1 Mustang. But like I said, this is in a 2020 Bullet, which is a beautiful car. You guys uh, saw on the channel about a year or so ago, we had one of these things in. And we got another one back. This one's 2020 model. And the only real difference between it and the 2019 we had is this one has Recaro's, whereas the previous one just had the uh, standard seats in it. The Recaro's are definitely nice. I'm not sure that in a Bullet I would order the Recaro's, but uh, you know that's a personal preference thing. To me, the Bullet is more of a uh, Boulevard Cruiser, like a. It's a class. Basically, it's the classiest version of a Mustang you're going to get. It's very low key, very low badge. You got that blacked out grill with no pony badging or anything like that on it. Nothing on the sides. Basically, you just have the bullet logo on the back to give it away, but it's a very low key, classy looking car. I really like it. The uh, It's got the not quite chrome, I guess sort of like a polished stainless uh, trim around the windows. Looks good. Same treatment on the grill. Very, very nice car. And uh, we're gonna go take it for a ride. All right, guys, we're here in the bullet, so let's take it out for a little cruise. Fire it up here. Turn the stereo off. Let's put it in the my mode. Whoever programmed this one uh, did a pretty good job because that gives us uh, sport on the steering, sport plus on the uh, suspension or sport on the susp suspension, track on the exhaust, all the good options. Here comes the rake van known as the Mac Tools truck. Let's get out on the road here. Not too bad. A little too much traffic to do much, so I decided to pull off on this side road. We'll go out this way some. So we did a review on the bullet about a year or so ago, and I have like four or five videos in a playlist. So if you really want a full review of a bullet Mustang, I'll put the link in the description below. Check that out. Uh, the Bullet is probably my favorite non-high performance special edition of a Mustang. This thing has a fantastic load of options all put together and makes it a really, really nice car. We have the, uh, the active suspension and big brakes. We've got the hopped up engine that gives us 480 horsepower and really, really nice subtle styling that looks great. So uh, as far as a package goes, I really, really like the Bullet. And if I was gonna buy a 2020 model Mustang, a new one, I would have a tough time choosing between a Bullet or a 
base base bases base gets mustang gt with a performance pack level two suspension which we tested a car like that as well uh, basically all it had was the recaros and the active exhaust and the level two uh, suspension performance pack suspension i'll put the link in the description below for that too because that was a really nice car but those two uh i would have a very tough time choosing uh, between those thankfully for 2021 ford's coming out with the mach 1 mustang which is just about both of those things smashed together it'll have the engine package that i love from the bullet plus the suspension from the performance pack level 2 with the sticky tires see the bullet gets the active suspension but not the sticky tires that the performance pack level 2 gets to me that's sort of a big deal i like having those big steamroller sticky tires gives it great handling and just a much more aggressive look as well just listen to that exhaust that's another thing that i've sort of changed my mind on over the years is the active exhaust system on these cars at first i was like that's a kind of an expensive option for a part that i almost always change on all my vehicles i almost always put uh, different exhausts on i actually think i'm gonna spin around here and check out this other road but I always change the exhaust on my cars, and um, so I didn't want to spend, you know, a grand on factory exhaust that I knew I was going to pull off. But the more I've driven this car and other cars with this active exhaust system, the more I like it. The sad fact is the Coyote engine is not the best sounding Ford V8. But that sounds pretty damn good. And we've got rev matching downshift, which I love. So I've kind of changed my mind on the active exhaust system. I would probably buy that now. It, uh, when you want to be quiet and cruise in comfort, peace, put it in quiet mode. You can ride around in a bullet and be very subdued. If you want to make some noise, you can make some noise. So I've, I've changed my mind on that. I would probably go for that and uh, maybe forego a whole lot of aftermarket exhaust. Definitely not like a full exhaust because you guys have heard coyotes with wide open exhaust and it's not great. And it can get old very fast if you're going to be driving a thing every day. This gives you the best of both worlds in my opinion and uh, factory installed so you don't have to mess with it. So I've kind of changed my mind on that. But the thing that, I'll, that I keep going back to about this bullet is to me, it proves how good the Mach 1 is gonna be. It bought, the Mach 1 is basically taking everything I love from this car, the suspension, except it's giving you a better version of it. The engine, which is my absolute favorite version of a Coyote engine, uh, that's not supercharged, <laughs> uh, you get that. You're getting the transmission from the GT350, which is by far and away superior to the MT82. This one's actually not too bad in this car, but the Tremec from a GT350 is a far, far superior transmission. I would definitely pick that over an MT82 any day of the week. You get all the sticky tires, you get all that good stuff on a Mach 1. I would definitely be interested in that car. The only issue I think I might have with a Mach 1 is it's going to be kind of l loud and out there, boisterous styling, I guess you could say. You're going to have that. So that's a very far departure from the Bullet. And one of the things I love about the Bullet is it's very subdued styling. It's almost too subdued, but I like it. It's a very classy look. The Mach 1's going in the opposite direction. It's going to have plenty of stickers and sticky outy parts and things like that i don't know uh, i could probably learn to live with it especially if you pick the right color i don't think i'm going to be a grabber yellow guy but uh just a nice plain white probably look good on that car this is not bad But the other things I like about this car, in particular, got the full digital dash. I'm a huge fan of that. 
I think that looks great. Got the Recaros. I'm a big fan of the Recaro seats. Um, you know, not everybody loves them. I like them. They fit me well. I enjoy the bolsters. Uh, I like a, a seat that hugs you, even on long trips and everything. I, I like the Recaros. I would definitely go for that option. But what I'm really looking forward to, all the good parts that I like about this car, plus the GT350, plus just a performance pack level two GT, all put together in one car that's not outrageously priced and shouldn't be too terribly limited on production. I mean, anybody should be able to get a hold of a Mach 1. And uh, then I'm really, I'll, at that point, if I get one of those cars, I'm gonna be torn. Should I go through and just dial everything in the way I feel it should be from the factory, which is, of course, put an MGW shifter in it, get a tune on it, maybe play around with the intake, maybe not, because if it comes with the intake off of this car, which is the open air element uh, from the GT350, maybe just slap a filter in it, get an SMB filter, call it a day. Definitely get a tune though. Tunes really wake these things up. A good 93 octane tune make a big difference. The exhaust, uh, that's iffy. Um, maybe, maybe not. You know, I like the active exhaust, but uh, the real question is going to be to supercharge or not to supercharge. That is the question. That is always the question. And I would almost always lean on throw a blower on it. That's one of my things. I like boost. A boosted Mustang. I've had several. I've had a TVS based ones. I've had Whipple twin screwed ones. They're all great. There is there is no bad boost on one of these cars. Coyotes love it, especially these Gen 3 Coyotes with the direct injection. You just get so much performance per pound of boost compared to anything else. I mean, this is one of my things that I get hung up on a lot. Have you guys actually looked at the power numbers per pound of boost that a Coyote will put out versus, you know, a Dodge Hemi or a GM LT based. The Coyote embarrasses all that. It's ridiculous for that small of an engine. Hey, look, pick your own collar greens. It, uh, it's just amazing how much power these cars put out per pound of boost. And uh, you can just get so much out of them. Uh, anyone looking for a barn find? Got a nice old truck and looks like a barn on top of a car. So some nice stuff out these roads but i don't know what would you guys do mach 1 is going to be a pretty neat car leave it in a nah you know we'd boost it yeah that's going to be the way it goes and i would probably just buy a couple pulleys and if i don't want it nuts back it down to like six pounds of boost eight pounds something like that when you want to go crazy pop it up to 12. you know it's it takes absolutely nothing to make 800 horsepower on a gen 3 coyote but I think we're just going to leave it there. I have a full article linked in the description below. If you guys want to head over to SVTP and tell me how I'm wrong about this car or the Mach 1 and what you would do with it, that's the place to do it. Uh, just come over there, check it out. We always have all the latest news, reviews, and information on your favorite Ford performance-related vehicles. And we've got some great new swag coming out, so definitely check that out too. But until the next time, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff to our YouTube channel. We have tons more content coming out. I mean, a ridiculous amount of videos, way more than in the past, really trying to grow the channel and uh, those subs really help. So I appreciate that guys. And I'll see you next time.